All right. I'm gonna try to make it through class tonight. I can bit my tongue in half a while ago, so it hurts. Welcome to Kabbalah of Adam. Tonight we are gonna continue in our journey in on our Zechariah class, but we're in Haggai the prophet. And as hopefully what y'all have been able to see as we're going through this, and it's going to get more evident and more prevalent that the, that the prophecy of the temple follows the feast days. When this word comes, when this word comes, when this word comes, you know, we started before Rosh Hashanah, then it, there was a word there, and, and Elul, then, then you go to uh, Tishri, then Keslev, and it's just going to keep mirroring the feast. And it's, it, it's quite phenomenal. So we'll go ahead and uh, say our prayer. And we have some great stuff for you tonight. Rule of the universe and master of all masters, Father of mercy and forgiveness, we thank you, our God and the God of our Father, by bowing down and kneeling, which brought us closer to your Torah and your holy work, and which enable us to take part in the secrets of your holy Torah. How worthy are we that you grant us such a big favor? That is the reason we plead before you that you will forgive and acquit all of our sins and they shall not bring separation between you and us. And may it be your will before you, our God and the God of our Father, that you awaken from our hearts, love and revere you. And may you listen to our utterances and open our closed heart to the hidden study of your Torah. And may our study be pleasant before your place of honor as our own most sweet incense. And may you emanate to us light from the source of our soul to all of our being. And may the sparks your holy servants through which you revealed your wisdom to the world shine. May their merit and the merit of their fathers and the merit of their Torah and holiness support us so we shall not stumble to our study. And by their merit, enlighten our eyes in our learning as stated by King David, the sweet singer of Israel. Open my eyes so I see wonders from your Torah. Because from his mouth, God gives wisdom and understanding. May the utterance of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart find favor for you, God, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. All right. Mm. We ended last week on verse 8. Mine is the silver, mine is the gold. We're in Haggai 2, verse 8, if you want to follow along. The word of Hashem, Master of Legions. Of course, we know that the gold and silver is the Hasidim and the Guvarot, and these are the Nitzots that will be brought out of the nations and even in the uh, even in the art scroll commentary they uh, go in to discuss that uh, that even at Gog and Magog they will bring all their wealth and riches so we know this is a barbanel so we so we know that that uh, all the gold and all the silver just like when they came out of Egypt and had all the gold and silver because they were supposed to build a tabernacle, like we went over last week. This is what it's for. And this is the Holy Nitzos. And this is also the Shefa that the nations take, the Hitzonim take uh, from it. But it will be returned to its master. And these, uh, the, the uh, Hashem Sebaot, this is the light of Yesod, and, and the Nahi, which is the Nahi, which is Netzach Hod Yesod. And so as, as we get going here today, we have Keter, Hokma, Fina, okay, we have the Midot, and so as the chef is, as it's coming down from Ak, ah, it's gonna it's gonna form a union like this, like this, like this, like this. This is gonna come down here, but all three this is ultimately comes down here. But Hode is the last one that it's gonna go through. So the way it's going to work, it's that we're we're gonna have the Halaya aspect, we're gonna have the Elohim aspect. 
Okay, we're going to have the Hasidim and Guvarot, the Haggah aspect, and then we're going to have the Nahi aspect with Netzach, Hod, Yesod, and then Kabbalah. This is called Nahi. Okay, and um, Hasidim, Teferit, Guvarot. This is called the Haggah. All right, so those are the acronyms. But we're, what we're what this whole thing is going to, to do in this piece is we're going to follow this all the way down to the Malchut, which is going to be the temple, and it's going to be the Shachina. All right. So let's uh, let's get into it. So on the back side of this, the back side over here, this is the den. This is where the Hitzonim are. All right. So what happens when, on the front side, when the focus is not here on the Adonai, and there's, it's called cutting the shoots, remember? It's called cutting the shoots. When the shoots are cut, in other words, when this union is cut, this is Shabbat, 6-7, six, 6-7. Seven, six, seven. When this is cut, the heats of Neem attack the Shefa, and draw it out over here. All right. So all the gold and silver over here. And so what Hashem is saying in verse eight is when when this is reestablished, all the shefa, all the sparks are going to come back. Okay. Now let's go. We're going to start today's class in verse nine. Verse 9 of Haggai. Of Haggai. Chapter 1. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 9. Yeah. It says, the Peshat says, The glory of this latter temple will be greater than that of the first, says Hashem, Master of Legions, and I will grant peace to this place. The word of Hashem. Master of Legions. Rob Valley says, The glory of this latter temple, the latter kavod, this kavod, holy. And when, when you're talking, we know when we're talking glory, we're talking Shekhinah, right? And we know that the Shekhinah is one thing that was not in the second temple. So we know he's prophesying third temple. Okay? The latter kavod will be greater than the first temple, as the latter is a good thing, rather than its beginning, than at its beginning, because at the end, there, there are all the perfected and completed lights. So, once the third temple will be built, all of the completed lights will be there, and that is going to be the shefa that I drew as it's coming down. These are going to be the com completed lights. Um, from the supernal realms. And it is explained in its Peshat as the matter said by our sages. Whoever has not seen Herod's temple has not seen a beautiful building in, a, in their lifetime. This is from Bab Baba Batra in the Talmud 4a2 is where he's quoting from. And this also alludes to the building, the temple of the Shekhinah below, as it is in the replica or form above, in the supernal realms. And the latter house, rather than the first house, precisely refers to verse 9, as it is said in Isaiah 49, 21. So turn to Isaiah 49, and 21. 1041. Page 1041 and Tanakh. And you will say in your heart, Who has begotten these? For I 
have been bereaved, bereaved and alone in exile. Who's speaking here? Who is I? Who is Ani? That's the Shekhinah. Mm -hmm. And a wanderer. So who has reared these? Do you remember what who is in Hebrew is me. Menyut. Me. And who is me? Imabina. Who, who can stand in front of the glory of God? It's not a question. It's a statement. Imabina. Right? That's his upper Shekhinah. So, <clears throat> the lower Shekhinah is in exile, and the upper Shekhinah is Imabina, the supernal mother. So, she is fixing, and she will take charge of her children because they are in exile. So, the, 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 the temple is going to be the aspect of the lesser, and Imabina is the aspect of the greater. This is the aspect of the mitatron on the female side. Behold, and the word alone means barren as well. Behold, I have been left by myself. Where are these from? It's very interesting. The next, uh, the next verse is about the new Torah. <laughs> according to the Gon Vilna in the lecture. So, me is who? This, this is the supernal Shekhinah. Who will do it by her hands and complete and, and conclude the entire tikkun? And the completed and perfected temple of the lower Shekhinah will be in the aspect of godly expansion by means of the supernal Shekhinah that speaks out to her from her supernal lights to magnify her and, and to complete and perfect her tikkun. This is the sod of, the secret of, and the kavod of this latter temple will be greater than that of the first. And when the tikkun is completed and perfected, totally, completed until it reaches to the aspect of Godly, then there will not be any place left for the Hitzonim to cling to. <clears throat> to jump with their accusations and to settle and suck in the place of the Makom in that place. There won't be there won't be Yesod for them to suckle off of the Hitzonim like I drew in the in the picture. That is not fitting or proper. And this is as written. I will grant peace to this place, to this Makom. Turn to Exodus 23, 20. Behold, Hine. Remember, every time we have a behold, there's there's a, a Moloch right after it, a Metatronic interface. I send an angel before you to protect you on the way and to bring you to the place, to the Makom that I have made ready. Do be aware of him, hearken his voice, do not rebel against him. We know this whole deal right here. Because the difference between uh, rebel is from shade to shaddai, as we've studied before. So, this place, not only is the Temple Mount, is the Yesod, but this place is also the Temple, male and female. It, because the verse says, I will grant peace uh, to this place. What is peace? Shalom, union. Because there is not strife and contention and war except from the Hitzonim that spread themselves out and mix and intermingle and when they are removed and dismissed, the peace comes. So 
every bit of distension and strife and contention and war that has ever taken place is because of the Hitzonim. And what did we learn the Hitzonim were last week? The air of Ra. Mm. I'm working on a big uh, soul secret on the air of Ra, and it's coming along good. When I when I get it done, I'll give it. I, I don't I don't know where I'm gonna fit it in with our deal, but it's it's so big we, we have to know because now now it's easy to put a finger. Uh, and uh, on, on the heat so neat. What are the outside portions, right? And so when all these are removed and dismissed, the shalom comes. Immediately the din ceases, as it says in Proverbs 22:10. So turn with me to Proverbs 22 and 10. It's on page 1601. You know there? Proverbs 22.10 says, Drive away the scoffer, and strife will depart, and judgment and shame will cease. So, now let's go back and read verse 9 and go back to the Peshat. The glory of this latter temple will be greater than that of the first, said Hashem, master of legions, and I will grant peace to this place, the word of Hashem, master of legions. And now we know the soap. Now let's go to verse 10 and what Ravali does in this section, he does 10 through 12 and one explanation. So I will read 10 through 12 and then we will lay the sowed on it. So on the 24th of the ninth month, so this is now into Kislev, mm -hmm. and the 24th is the day before Hanukkah. All right? So, so far, you know, we started right after the ninth of Av mm -hmm. and we went to Rosh Hashanah and we went through Yom Kippur and we went to Sukkot in, in, in the prophecies, when the prophecies were given. And now it's coming up on right before uh, Hanukkah. So what do you think is going to happen? What's the Hanukkah about? The lights. The lights. What have we been talking about? The lights. Getting the <laughs> lights to the Shekhinah. Mm -hmm. Right? To the temple. And what happened on Hanukkah? The lights didn't go out in the temple. Out, that's it. Okay. Now, where do you think? Where do you think? After we get this this part of the prophecy, where do you think the next place it's going to go? What's the next feast after Hanukkah? Uh, Purim. Purim. You think it's going to go to Purim? Guess what? It will. Mm. Because Purim. Is the secret of the female you sowed, Ima Bina. Mm -hmm. That's the whole secret of Queen Esther, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's the that's the lights of the queen, man. Mm -hmm. And what happens in Purim? Esther is coming up on March seventeenth. What what happens? Adam wakes up, and the king aroused from his sleep. Remember, it's been in Katnu in Dormita. But when the lights of the mother hit the mochin of Zah, okay, when the lights of the mother hit the mochin of Zah, this would be the, this is the, this is what's called the mochin, and this is Zah, right here, the midot, the six, and that wakes up. That's that's uh, his uh, guru to fair. Yes, yeah. This is the Haggah. That's correct. So when these lights hit here, get ready. Mm. 
because the Hitzonim doesn't don't stand much chance. Just ask Haman. <laughs> right? <coughs> and there's nothing new under the sun. Here in America and all over the world, we're, we're reliving this story right now. Mm-hmm. What is the Hitzonim doing? They're trying to do, they've always war, war, war. We gotta have a war, we gotta have a war, we gotta have strife. That's the Hitzonim. That's the heir of Ra. Every single time. There's nothing else. So here we go. On the 24th of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, now we know Darius is Akhoshverosh and Esther's kid, the word of Hashem came to Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus said Hashem, Master of Legions, inquire now a ruling. This is really a Torah. It says Torah. They're wanting a ruling from Torah, from the Kohanim, saying, If a person carries a ritually defiled flesh, in the corner of his garment and then he touches bread with his garment corner and the bread touches stew and the stew touches wine or oil or any other food does that food become defiled so Haggai is going to the coin and he's he is posing a question now problem with this is it's a little bit mistranslated from English to Hebrew because there's really not a good word for that Hebrew word so they use the file here all right however to to preface how wise the Kohenims are they know what he's asking obviously even though he's using these things Bread, oil, wine, stew, you know, he's using these, these, uh, what's a good term for that? Metaphors. Mm -hmm. So here's what it says. And indeed, it's, it's establishing, may his name be blessed, will be to arouse and waken Israel as the generation that girds itself with all my strength. Their strength and power to remove all the oppressors that cause the concealment of the face. Hester Panim. What do we know about Hester Panim? It sounds like Esther. What is the secret of Esther? The name of God is not written in the book. He's concealed his face. So what, hap- what is happening now is God's concealing his face. And we have to figure out what causes God to conceal his face from his people and from the world. Until they will complete and perfect the holy yihu, the holy union, and, and its revelation without any garmenting and screening and screen Remove the screen, as they say in Isaiah 20, I mean 30, verse 20. So turn to Isaiah, and this was Rabbi Bach's favorite quote. Isaiah 30 and verse 20, page 1005. The Lord will give you meager bread and scant water. Your teacher will no longer be hidden behind his garment. That word garment there is literally wing. But the word for teacher here is Enoch. Who is Enoch? Metatron. This is a big piece of Metatron. Your teacher, Metatron, Hanukkah, your educator will no longer be hidden behind his garment, behind his wings. And your eyes will behold your teacher. And here 
is the reason that the prophet came to them with this saying. In support of the matter that they said in verse 10 through 12. In the ninth month of Kessler, right before the day of Hanukkah, the 25th, right? And the matter they said at the start of verse, inquire now from the Kohanim from the Torah. Who is the Kohanim? Kohanim is, is the lesser Metatron, right? He's the lesser Metatron that goes in and speaks to the Metatron, right? right. About what? About his Torah. And the reason is because the Torah of the right side alludes to Yesod Abba. So, we have, uh oh, we have Abba and Ema. This is Abba This is Elohim. This is the right side. The Torah from the right side comes from there. Okay? This is the attributes of mercy. This is the attributes of justice or judgment. Okay? If you, if you don't do this, you get this. Right? And it's not two things. It's not two things. Don't confuse Has, uh, Hashem and Elohim with two different things. One's his right hand and one's his left hand. Okay? It's one thing. I got a right hand and a left hand. You know? Uh, as it says in, in Song of Songs, um, uh, my left hand is under your head my right hand embraces you. Right? Mm -hmm. I got you, but I'm hugging you. Right? Right? So now turn to Deuteronomy 33 and verse 2. And he said, Hashem came from Sinai, having shown forth from Seir, having appeared from Mount Paran, and approached with some holy midrads from his right hand, he presented the fiery Torah to them. Okay? Now, what is Seir? Does anybody remember? Seir, and he appeared at Paran. Sa'ir is the place of Esau. And Paran is the place of Ishmael. He presented the Torah to Esau, to Christianity, and he presented, which became Christianity, and he presented it to Ishmael, that came, it became Islam, and they both rejected it. And another text on this is Habakkuk 3, verse 2 and 3. Okay, but the point here is out of his right hand comes his fiery Torah. And he, Hashem, stood by the Kohanim, Mamash, literally, as is known. Therefore, it was about the Kohanim, as it says in Deuteronomy 33.10. So turn back to Deuteronomy 33. And 10. As it says, they shall teach you ordinances to Jacob and your Torah to Israel. And they shall place incense before your presence and burn offerings on your altar. All right. Uh, why does it say Jacob there and Israel? Aren't they the same thing? One is the lesser, one is the greater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and 
One is the aspect of Rachel, which is Jacob, and one is the aspect of Leah, which is Israel. For they shall teach Jacob your judgments and Israel your law. And more, because the Kohanim are the companions of the Matronita, the Mitatron, the Shachina herself, to unite her with her husband. Therefore, he, the prophet, the Navi, asked them the Kohanim of the Torah. Makes sense. If, if, if you're in charge of the Torah and you're in charge of uniting them, you better know the answer to this question. Right? And, and he's, because this is the written Torah precisely. That he would become one and unite them with the oral Torah. Precisely. Because the Shekhinah is the oral Torah. Zaron Pin is the written Torah, and the Kohenim is the thing that unites them. To join them together, to be bound together as one habitation. And now we are going to explain the matter of the question that Haggai asked them in verses 12. So let's go ahead and read 10 and 11, now that we understand What's going on there? Let's just read 11. Thus says Hashem, Master we inquire now a Torah ruling, a ruling from Torah from the Kohanim saying, Now, if an, if an ish, if a person, if a man carries ish, that is, that, that the, the, the Holy One, Kodesh Borku, is the secret of Zeranpin. So, the Holy One of Israel is the secret of Zah. And who is Zah? Adam. And it has holy flesh. Now, it says in here, defiled flesh. But it's holy flesh. Which is none other than the holy Shekhinah. Using it as ritually defiled flesh. If the Shekhinah is ritually defiled. Rav Bali calls it holy flesh because it's not defiled. As in Genesis 23, uh, 2, 23, which is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. We know that's, that's the Rachel and the Leah aspects. And if she is asleep, with the corner or the wing of his garment. That is to say that the zivu with her will be made back to back in the names of these things. These, these, all these metaphors he's giving us are basically saying that instead of having the union face to face, they're back to back. We know that is the secret from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur. Right? So when they are back to back, this is the secret of him hiding his face. And this is the secret of if something defiled touches the edge of your garment. Because it's not supposed to be back to back. It's supposed to be face to face. So is it defiled in this manner? Yes, because it's not correct. But is she the holy flesh? Absolutely. Basar. That the Zebu with her is back to back in the names that they they are the secrets of the corners and not the names themselves. I.e., that is to say, in the garments and not in the lights. And all of her Shepha spreading out in abundance will come to her as they are the secrets of bread, stew, wine, oil, and other food. <clears throat> so 
But the way of this zivug, of this union, is inferior and not complete and perfect. Whether she will be rectified and she will have her kedusha or holiness and perfected and completed union in this way of this zivug or not. And they, the union, are restored immediately. As this had not been rectified, as, as here, the perfect and complete union needs and necessitates that it will be face to face and the lights in the lights and not in the garments. All right? Because the lights come from the face. Moses' face shone because he was in the presence of the light. Right? So what he's saying is as long as they are in this configuration back to back, it's an incomplete union in Zebu. How did the Nakash get in? Back to back. Back to back. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's how the Hitsunim gets in. But once they're face to face, that's when the holy Sopranal lights are completed and perfected. And it's not in the names of the things above, as in the matter is said in Isaiah 20:30. Your teacher will no longer be hidden. And the completion and the perfection hangs upon the zivug alone solely, nothing else besides it. There is nothing else in this world that can fix this world other than going from here to here. That's the secret of revealing the face of the teacher. Hum. From back to back, face to face. What did Moses say? I want to see you faith, your face. Mm -hmm. What does the Torah say? Nobody can see my face and live. What does it say? And I talked to Moses as friend, face to face. Right? What it is, is panim, panim vapani, face within face. They're not looking at each other. They are one inside the other. They're both looking in the same direction. That is why his face shone because he was looking in the way the face was shining. From the backside, as Moses seen him when he passed by. Uh, yeah, as yeah. I passed by, you come in from the cleft in the back. All right, it's called panim vapanim, face within face. As as the guru goes into the Hasidim, it's mitigated, mm -hmm. right? And the tzaddiks in the world to come will, will recline with their crowns in their heads, not on their heads. Okay? This is the this is the mechanics of it. This is what he's saying. There is no rectification in this world of anything without that. So let's go back and read it. If a person carries ritually defiled flesh in the corner of his garment, in other words, if you are back to back with if you're if Hashem's facing that way and you're facing that way. You're on the back side, right? Mm -hmm. And then he touches the bread of the corner of his garment, and touches, touches the stew, bread touches the stew, and the stew touches the wine and the oil and any other thing. Does that food become defiled? Now, 13. And the Kohanim answered, no. Haggai said, if one who touches a dead person were to touch all these, would it become defiled? So he's testing them. Because they're fixing to have to make the union between Zah and Nook. And she's in the Klippa. Thirteen. And he, Haggai, also asked the Kohanim, if a dead person, a human corpse, that is to say, and if the Zivu was in the concealed face, in this inferior way, and also, moreover, it touches Tame Nefesh, a, a tainted soul, right? A dead person. Tame Nefesh, which is the secret of the Sitra Akra. That interfered and intermingled also with this inferior Zebuk and settled in the holiest soul in the secret of all of these. Remember this and these. 
and the secret of these. So he's he's asking one question. Look, they're doing surgery on Adam. The Kohanim. You have you have Adam and you're fixing to make the zebra. Now, if the face is concealed. Is she defiled? She's holy. But is is she in defiled union? What if it if what if it touches uh, it, are, are the lights inferior? Yes, that's the bread stew oil wind up. But what if it touches a dead person? Is there a dead person in Magan? No. What about the Sitra Akra? The Nakash? See? Because the Nakash has come in and has intermingled and interfered with the Zivug. Which is the whole, whole thing that I'm working up, you know, on the Ra, which is the secret of this matter. And it's, and it's settled in the holy sowed in the secret of all of these. And would it become defiled? By touch, contact with the defiled, by the heats of name that interfered and angle, intermingled and settled with it, so that they would defile without a doubt. And we find according to this that the zebu was not complete and perfect and was back to back in the time of the concealed face. And it was not enough as it did not have complete holiness, kadusha, for the reason that we have said, but that there was defilement in it. Also, because the Hitzonim had interfered and ingled, mid, ing, ing, intermingled and settled in it and defiled all of these, spreading out the, the, all of these, which is spreading out of the Shefa, as is mentioned in verse 12. The bread, the stew, the wine, the oil, and all the food. And they are the ones that cause all of the trouble to Israel. Which is the Arab rock. As the matter they say in Deuteronomy 31, 17. So go to Deuteronomy 31 and 17. My anger will flare against it on that day, and I will forsake them. I will conceal my face from them, and they will become prey, and many evils and distresses will encounter it. It will say on that day, it is not because my God is not in my midst that these evils have come. Is it not that God is, is it not because my God is not in my midst that these evil, this evil becomes upon me, comes upon me? Verse 18, but I will surely conceal my face on that day because of all the evil that it did, for it has turned to gods of others. Okay? What has the entire religious world done? Turn to other gods. That is the secret of the turning to the Sitra. That is the secret of so being face to face, turning to the Sitra Akra. Back to back. Back to back. An incomplete union. You know, if you don't want the temple, what what does the Talmud say? What is what did Ravali say? Those who don't want the temple, it is if they have no God. Hashem, they have other gods, which is what the Arab Rav wants. No temple. For Deuteronomy 31, 17 says, I will conceal my face from them and they will become food. I will hide Hester, as in Esther, and they will become prey to enemies. And that is what, and that is to say that the cause for all the trouble will be because the Zebu was not pinimi inside of the face, of the interface, but only on the outside, back to back. And this is the secret of Deuteronomy 31, 17. 
So go to Deuteronomy 31, 17. Oh, I just read it, didn't I? I did, I did, I did, I just read it. It is not because Elohai, my God, is not in my midst. It, it, is, it is not because Elohai, my God, is not in my midst, precisely. That is well understood in the secret, as is said. You don't want God? You turn your back to God? Guess what? He's not in your midst. He's in his midst. Right? So, 13. And Haggai said, If one who touches a dead person touches all of these, would it become the father? Absolutely. Now, the coin answer said, it would become defiled. These guys know what they're doing. Haggai spoke up and said, verse 14, so is this people, and so is this nation before me, the word of Hashem, and so is their handiwork, what they offer there will be defiled. Let me read it again, because this is one of the most important verses that we have studied in Haggai. So is this people and so is this nation before me, the word of Hashem, and so is all their handiwork. What they offer will be defiled. And this is what Ravai says. And this is the secret. And this is what the prophet said in proof and in support. Of all this caused and brought on by their troubles and distresses. And therefore they needed to give their hearts to complete and to perfect the tikkun of the Shekinah. And bring her face to face with Zah, her husband. And to remove all the hindrance in order to be saved from all the troubles and distresses. And this is the secret as is written in verse 13 that we read. As there is still defilement from the Hitzonim that are in the middle and are hindering and preventing the Zivu Hapinimi, the inner union of the holy oneness of the Yehu. So he said, what he's saying is, that the Hitzonim what is the problem? Why? Why is this not happening? Why is the temple not being built? Okay? Because the Hitzumim attack this right here. Attack your mind. Your mochim. Amalek is part of the Arab Rav. Of Esau. Now there's the Arab Rav of Yaakov in Israel. There's also air of Rav. And what is it? Doubt. So from Esau's aspect, it is doubt. From Israel's part, it's known as forgetfulness. They forget. They forget. They forget their God is God. They're worried about God's are shooting missiles. Your God is God. Right? They forget. Because it the Mohim goes to sleep. Everybody's asleep. What is it? What's going on right now in the world? It's called the Great Awakening. People are waking up. Been they asleep. They had to be asleep before they woke up. Yeah, people have been asleep. Look what they've been pulling over your eyes. Okay? If it's in the physical, how much more is it in the spiritual? Now, once this is removed, it's going to rock and roll. Okay? Now, now, they'll go over here and they'll build skyscrapers, you know, and buildings, and they'll build churches, and they'll build all kinds of stuff. They won't, won't build that. One simple building that already has the plans. Plans are right up there. 
Oh, you won't. Right? Ezekiel wrote yeah. four chapters on it. You can take it down, That's all right. It's right there. We got the plans right here. Nothing new. So, there's still defilement from the Hitzonim in the middle, hindering and preventing the Zivuk from the inner holy oneness, drawing from it so that all the works and labor is blemished and everything is defiled. As the Kedusha holiness cannot dwell in a place of defilement. Like I've been saying, God's presence is not going to come here without a place that is not defiled. It's too holy. Mm -hmm. Right? And as the temples were destroyed, the Ruach HaKodesh lessened and lessened and lessened and lessened and lessened and prophecy lessened and lessened and lessened until it's been gone for generations. You know? People tell me all the time, oh, I got the Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKodesh. Oh, really? One of the ten attributes is raising the dead. If you can raise the dead... At will, like they do all over the Talmud, those guys, those sages, then you got the whole, then you have Ruach Hakodesh, right? If you can't do that, you don't have it. So, I haven't met anybody yet that has it. What you think is Ruach Hakodesh is your mind giving you intuition. I ran over a guy once and he got up. <laughs> I thought he was dead. <laughs> so, it, the Kedusha will not dwell in a place to find it. And so, verse 14, all their handiwork and what they offer there will be defiled. And as, and, and as in mention, the people... It mentions the people. Where do we see that? And the people sinned against God. And the people complained against Moses. And the people were hungry. And the people made the golden calf. And the people and the people and the people. They don't say the children of Israel. Now Israel got blamed because it's one unit. Right? And the people and also the nation. <coughs> as mentioned, alludes to the mixture of the klepa in between and among the holiness. In the secret, as is said, as here the people, they are the hitsunim, and they are the secret of the Arab Brahman. And the nation is Israel, as is said. First Chronicles 17 and 21. So turn with me to 1 Chronicles 17 and 21. Uh, that's 19, page 19. And who is like your people Israel, a unique nation on earth? And whom went forth to redeem you unto himself for a people, achieving for yourself renown for great and marvelous wonders, driving out nations before your people, whom you had redeemed from Egypt. And who is like your people, Israel, one nation on earth? And this mixture caused everything to be defiled, that there was no Kedusha, holiness, and purity in their handiwork. And this is the secret of verse 14, as it says, so this people, and so is this nation. See, the nation of Israel is Adam. The Erev Rav is the Zuhama of the Nakash, of the Sitra Akra that got in with the making of the golden calf. And now you can't tell Jew from Arab Ra. Except for one thing. Are they working on the third temple? 
Hmm. If they're working on the third temple, they are not heir of Rob. If they don't want the third temple, raise your flag. You can flag them every time. If they're more concerned about making a name for themselves with students and this and that and the other, da, 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 da. you know, I, I, I gotta, I gotta build my money up. I gotta, you know, more worried about building their own house than a shim's house. That is a secret of their raw. Mm. As while there was this mixture of the nation and the Arab draw, the people. This was the reason for everything they did in the beginning before the building was Tomei, defiled. Therefore, it was loss and damage, and nothing succeeded for them in the least. And how, and how it was so, since, since then, when they began to be busy and occupy themselves with the work of the building, through the malacha, as the bracha, as the blessing, would be on their handiwork, and they would be successful. They're making a, uh, he's making kasha. How in the world, if all this is there, mm -hmm. if all this is there, and they're trying to do this, and he's saying, and he's saying, it's not going to be successful because of all the hitzonim, how are they going to be successful? Well, if you if you have this book, um, there's a, a little piece on here on on and uh, let's see if it's it's not raw. It may be Rashi. Uh, it's Rock. I'm sorry, it's the Rock. The sacrifices had been offered, and the Kohanim had officiated for 19 years prior to the actual starting building of the temple. Mm -hmm. All right? However, the prophet had not been instructed to test them until now. All right? So this has already taken place. And then he instructs them on the Shekhinah here, right? On the Sitra Akra here. Mm -hmm. What is Gematria 19? Oh. Yeah. If you have 45, shame ma. And you subtract 26 Havaya from it, you get 19, which is Hava. They were working on her. They were cleaning her up. They knew what they were doing. Are we dealing with fools here? No. It's 18 plus the Koel Achai, but it's still Gematria 19 is Hava. Okay? So, What they did was going to make it successful. Get rid of the Klippa. Right? So now I will read verse 14. And Haggai spoke up and said, So is this people, and so is this nation before me, the word of Hashem, and so is their handiwork, that they offer and will be defiled. Now, why don't we, uh, it's about 7 o'clock, right? About 6.57. 6.57. All right, why don't, we, why don't we stop it right there on 14, and we will pick up uh, 15 uh, next week. This, this next piece, it talks about the stones. It talks about the grain. It talks about the wine. Uh I mean, it goes into some, it talks about the grapevine and the fig tree and the pomegranate tree. It, it's got the biggest Kabbalah secrets in it that you will ever, ever hear. And the Torah is amazing and the sages are amazing. And I will see you next Wednesday.